relation to these other, uh, uh, like our sun and the brown dwarfs, the failed stars that we're talking about, a brown dwarf, is a very large object. So some of the things that, again, I'm going to kind of wrap it up towards the angle of saying, some of the things that we do have to pay attention towards is, is there a threat from space? And very clearly, when we start to analyze the astronomical information, even from the Sumerian culture, which is thousands of years old, they tell us there was a time when a great calamity took place. A large object, you know, the, the Nibiru passing by, could have other debris following it. You know, comets, asteroids, other debris, and this stuff is subject to whacking us. Now, not even with Nibiru into play, NASA, through Deep Impact, Armageddon, various releases of like 2028, there's a huge asteroid that could hit us. This is something we have to be aware of. Is there possibly a threat in space coming from natural objects that we at least need to be aware of? And very clearly, when we look at things that have happened, like the impact of, impact of uh, Shoemaker-Levy 9, when this comet broke up into nine parts and impacted Jupiter, you can actually see the scar marks uh, left from these impacts. Now those dark spots could fit four to eight times, or four to eight Earths in just one of those little dark spots. Four to eight Earths, that's about the size of Nibiru actually. Look how large of a scar that is on Jupiter though. You know, So you know, to think that we're not in any danger of space threat uh, of uh, you know asteroid or comet, it's definitely something that we need to be aware of because from the extinction of the dinosaurs to all the things that show, we've been whacked throughout history many times. So my own personal belief having to do with ufology and our level of technology that they don't really share with us, our militar militarization of space has allowed us, I believe, the fortitude to not have to worry about that stuff to the largest degree. I think we have the weapons, the Star Wars program, big hunking asteroids coming towards us, we're going to blow that sucker out of the sky. That's my personal belief. But Again, we do need to keep the radar of threatening objects coming from space. Now, one of the things to collaborate this idea that we might have a binary sun, uh, you know, a twin sun, a failed star, is the nemesis theory. There's been extensive research to show that very possibly there's this large Oort cloud and we have another sun at the, at the far reaches of this cloud that sends a lot of debris towards the inner solar system on a cyclic event. And we can look, uh, we can look into the, you know, the solar system now and, and into the, the galaxy, if you will, using these telescopes and start to see all those dots, all those glowing dots, those are all suns. All the bright objects are bases, basically places of activity that we still have yet to kind of zero in on and look for. Interestingly enough, this, this uh, nemesis theory describes the idea that there's a, a very large object that orbit, orbits you know, this failed sun at the far reaches of our solar system. There's this other object orbiting around our sun and that possibly, when it does its own orbit around that sun, sends debris towards the inner part of our solar system. And this, as Dr. Uh, Mueller here explained, uh, is that it's possible that on an extinction level event happening on millions of years, not 3,600 years like Nibiru's orbit, but on a scale of millions of years, there could be a cyclic event where large chunks of debris are sent towards the inner part of our solar system. And he theorized this is what possibly took out the dinosaurs, is that there was this large asteroid that was pushed with a bunch of other debris towards the inner part of our solar system, and it was at a time when there was a lot of other planets being uh, hit, bombarded by debris, and we were subject to that whacking. So there are many asteroids on the plate now where our near-Earth asteroid uh, detection program is publicly letting us know, hey, look, there are asteroids out there that we're tracking that are coming really close. Now what they define as close, an astronomical unit, is the distance from here to the sun. And what we have found is that there has been several asteroids that passed relatively close to us. Relatively close would be anything from the distance from Earth to the Moon, that distance, that little window, anything passing between the Moon and our Earth is like hugely close. <laughs> so they have sighted a couple of these asteroids that are very, very close to Earth and are kind of just letting us be aware of them. They go out and send probes to image them, 
and uh, you know get more research so that we can understand what affects their orbit and is it possible that this orbit could be, could be retrograded into a path that could come and whack us. So the kind of the last angle I want to wrap it up with is you know the other interesting angle that the Sumerians left of left us is depictions of the the, the Anunnaki helpers. Uh, they called these beings helpers of the Ejiji, and they very clearly depicted them as these these humanoid figurines that modern day I, uh, aliens have a resemblance to. These these bulbous head, large eyed beings that seem to be the helpers of the Anunnaki. Sumerians described that the Anunnaki used these beings to fly their craft, to help with medical experiments. So I theorize, my own hypothesis, very possible, if the Anunnaki actually did create us in their image and after their likeness, and they're orbiting their own Nibiru and this advanced race, it's very possible they could have also made another genetic engineered race to kind of oversee us and kind of keep tabs on their, their grand experiment. Because very interestingly enough, we have modern depictions of these gray aliens all looking the same, like they could be types of a clone, and they do medical experiments on us and checkups and sexual things having to do with what our physiology is doing, you know what I mean? And they're combining with their own race and stuff like that we hear. But I just theorize, what if it's possible that there's this other grand experiment that they're just kind of relaying the information and the data they collect from us on our physiology and our makeup back to the Anunnaki, relaying the grand experiment to them. So. I guess what I would like to say is just that I don't think we've ever been alone. And when we start to analyze the texts from these ancient cultures, it's very clear that ancient man had interaction with beings from the heavens all around the world. We have from almost every culture, the Hopi Indians in North, North America, uh, the Incas, the Aztecs, the Sumerians, the Egyptians, all of them, even going back to the Veda texts of the ancient Hindus in India, describe a time when man had interaction with their living gods. So I just simply say that these beings probably never have left. And that for whatever reason, we are now being slowly desensitized to this information. Uh, if there is a galactic federation of planets, or uh, like we see in Star Wars or Star Trek, a conglomerate race of beings that make these decisions, we're on quarantine right now. Earth is on quarantine. That's why I don't think we're seeing a lot of the activity as far as outright, hello, we're here because Earth isn't quite ready yet. We're still blowing up the planet, utilizing, or excuse me, uh, expelling natural resources, killing each other. What are we going to do with more technology at this point? So I think we're just slowly being nudged to make these changes for ourselves, for ourselves, and hopefully in our lifetime we will actually get to see, as the ancients did, a time when man lived amongst his living gods. So uh, I thank everyone for coming to the virtual lecture today. Uh, we, we whipped through those slides at a good pace. I'll take a few minutes if anyone would like to type a couple of questions. And uh, that's okay, Emma. That's okay. You're allowed to be late. Uh, if anyone has a couple of questions, uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and answer those now. So uh, shoot them at me. We had a nice little intimate group today, it looks like. And again, uh, this, this lecture will be posted tomorrow as an archived copy that you will be able to download and watch uh, at, at your own leisure. So I'll just wait a minute, see if anyone's typing up a long question here or anything. Okay, looks like we're good. I'm going to go ahead and end the, end the lecture today then. Thanks a lot, guys. And uh, look forward to uh, the next lecture next month is going to be uh, focusing on some of the structures on Mars. And I'll have that date posted soon.